Welcome to Unit 18. We look at the fundamental theorem of calculus, which consists of two parts. The first thing tells that if we integrate the derivative of a function, we get the function back up to the constant where we started integrating f of 0. When we differentiate a fun an integral of a function, then we get the function back without the constant. So these are the two versions. It tells us that integration and differentiation are dual to each other. And uh, the proof consists just of two pictures. So let's first let's look at this picture here. When we integrating up, when we integrate up f prime t, what we actually do is we integrate up all these changes. So when I look at this change here from k to k plus one over n, so what this what this change is, this is f of this thing is f of k plus one over n minus f of k over n. So when we do that, and when I, it's clear when we add up all these green parts here, so when I add up all these green parts here, so this, 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 and also here, so what I, what I end up with, I'm going to go here just like that, this, when I add up all these green parts, I'm getting the <coughs> difference here. This is a f of x minus f of 0. So we are climbing up all these changes. And what we can do is we can divide here. The, the distance here is that's just 1 over n. That's our h, small. n is large and h is small. If I take this and divide by h, which is uh, divided by 1 over n. That's the same thing than multiplying with, with n. Uh, what we have seen is when we, take the, when we take the, so this is actually, when we do that, that's actually the, that's very close to f prime k over n. So when I'm integrating up, uh, and I integrate up the f prime, from 0 to x, what we do is we take these little steps and we multiply with 1 over n. And that 1 over n cancels up. <coughs> so let me just write that down here. <coughs> so this is 1 over, this distance here is 1 over n. And uh, what we have is then we take the sum <coughs> and k over n is bigger or equal to 0 smaller than x. That was our definition. F k over n, f prime k over n, which is about f prime k plus 1 over n minus f of k over n divided by 1 over n, that the whole thing times 1 over n, right, that's the dx here, that converges to the, so this part here converges to f prime of uh, k over n, or f prime t, let's just call this t, and this is this this is the dx dt. So that's the dt. So when we integrate up all these changes, right, and I'm integrating all this f k plus one over n minus f k over n, this is a telescopic sum. So all these things, all these changes up, and the only thing which survives is f of x minus f of zero. So that's the proof of the first part of the fundamental theorem. And this part is even nicer because what we have is that when we integrate from f of t from 0 to x, let's call this f, f, of, f of x. So f of x is the integral from 0 to x f of t dt. So that's the area. So what we have is we have this area here. And when I'm taking fx plus h, I get this area here. So this is fx plus h. Now if I take the derivative, I take fx plus h minus f of x. Divided by h. So that goes to the derivative, uh, uh, which is f of f of x. So why does this go to the derivative f of x? Because what we have is this, this, let's just make it maybe blue here, 
This is the area difference. This is this difference here. It's an area, it's a rectangle, essentially, when we divide by h. So this is the h here. If I divide by h, I get the height, which is f of x. So that's f of x. So that goes to f of x. So here, that's the statement, right? The derivative of that uh, integral here is f of x. So without, without any kind of long computations, we see it from the, from the pictures. What we do here is we add up all these changes. This is, this is your bank account. This is the rate of change of your bank account. This is what you, your income are out, what, what, you, what you spend. Right? When you add them all up, that's the end value of your, of your account minus the initial value of your account. And in this case also, so we accumulate everything. The rate of change which we have, it is just the last entry you entered in, into your bank account. <coughs> so that's this. So we add up all these areas at the very end here. This is the area we add, uh, which is h times the function value at x. So this is very beautiful, a very beautiful uh, uh, theorem. And there is, it, it's, it's, it's right that we call it the fundamental theorem. It's the fundamental theorem of, of calculus. If you are using this theorem, we always use it in a, the following form. So that's, so that's how we use the theorem. We have already done examples, and I mentioned this already in the last lecture, uh, this is called an antiderivative. So that's why it's so important to have a, a good library of functions which we, which we know. Okay, so here's a collection of examples of integrals and uh, some of them are uh, easier, some of them are harder. You don't, you don't have to feel bad if you start integrating and you don't know. Here, this one should be routine, right? So what you have is, this is uh, x to the 6 over 6, and then we have a uh, square root of x becomes x to the 3 half times 2 third. So and then we evaluate this just from 1 to 2. So that is 2, 6, 4, 64, 64, minus 1, 64, minus 1 over 6, and then we have plus square root of 8, minus 1. I just wrote that down. We will afterwards check it with a computer. Sine square x, you have already done that in the homework. We are doing the double angle formula here. So this is important that you know the double angle formula. This is 1 minus cosine 2x half dx. And uh, so this is x half and then minus sinus 2x over 4. By the way, I just realized I've forgotten the e to the, <laughs> e to the x. Uh, you should maybe have all the, in all the cases, like sinus ax, when you integrate it, you get, uh, you get minus cosine ax over a, so that you have a little bit more general. That's your job to make a, a good formula collection. And uh, in this case, we have evaluated this from 0 to 2 pi, <coughs> and then we get just pi. So that's uh, important. Actually, if you integrate cosine square x, you get also pi. Sine square x plus cosine square x is 1, and then you get integrate 1 from 0 to 2 pi, you get 2 pi. So that's the, that's the right answer. In this case, we know this is e to the 3x over 3. We can immediately write that down. So this is e to the 6 minus e to the 0 over uh, 3, which is e to the 6 minus 1 over 3. <coughs> so <coughs> that's the... Uh, this this is a, a tough one. This is a tough one. <clears throat> and I just added it to illustrate the, that sometimes you need ideas and you need techniques. We will learn quite a few techniques of integration. So in this case, this is a, uh, uh, if, if you have never seen that, it's almost impossible. Maybe stop it and see whether you can do it. Uh, it's like a chess problem or a a, a aerobic puzzle or so. Sometimes you have to try out, right? Try out different moves 
and then see oh that doesn't work maybe oh now it worked <laughs> sometimes you are uh, you're lucky and uh, so in this case uh, the trick is actually to do instead uh, of taking x plus one we just translate things around so if you take that uh, if you just replace x with x uh, minus one so we get x minus one and uh, uh, square root of uh, x so we just shift things so shift things <coughs> So what happens is, uh, we learned that that's the, the theory of substitution, or the integration technique of substitution. <clears throat> I don't want to formalize this right now, but what happens if you have shifted by one, right? You have shift backwards, then we, instead of integrating from, so we integrate actually from three to six. So you see, when we, when we, when, especially if you look at the Riemann sum here, when you take x equal to 3, we get 2 here, that's like 2 here, and here we get uh, 3, like 3 here. So it's the same thing. We start at the same place and we stop. So it's just a different, a different uh, a, a coordinate system. But in this case, we can do that. This we can do. So this is the integral from 3 to 6, and then this is uh, x to the 3, third, 3 half minus x to the 1 half. Let's just go to the computer and see how well uh, the computer can do it <coughs> with the last one. So the last one was the integral uh, when we integrate x times square root, square root of x plus 1 and uh, x goes from 2 to 5. So that's the thing. Uh, I don't know whether this is the same which we have there, but you see Mathematica gives you directly the result. Use Mathematica here with the uh, with a uh, with a terminal, or uh, you can also uh, uh, use the, the usual usual thing is Mathematica. Use it here with a, so and then you can integrate, for example, uh, sine as x to the ten <coughs> to the power ten. Uh, <coughs> then see you see formula. So it's kind of you know uh, in general integration can be messy. You see here kind of this. Uh, sometimes you cannot also not do it. Say for example if you. So that's it for today and have a good weekend.